When I told a few friends that I would name this episode Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Linda Belcher, and How to Never Have a Bad Day, I got the response I expected. A few of them asked, who was Marcus Aurelius? Others asked, who was Linda Belcher? But all of them asked, why such a long title? And I said, I don't know. I'm not good at titles. Don't worry about it. (laughs) But for those of you who are aware of who all let's say these people are because one of them wasn't and technically isn't a person you may be asking what could they possibly have in common i'll explain when we return welcome to the first light podcast a program intended to boost your mood and improve your mental health if you haven't googled their names yet Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor and philosopher who lived between 161 and 180 AD. Probably the most famous, although fictionalized, depiction of him was by Richard Harris in the 2000 Ridley Scott movie Gladiator starring Russell Crowe. Seneca was a Roman philosopher who died in 65 AD, and while there are about 100 years separating the two, as philosophers, they were from the same school of thought, Stoicism. So, they were both Stoics. Now, often when people hear Stoic, they imagine that such a person is without emotion, dead, cold. They have disdain for feelings or emotional people, or if you're a Star Trek fan, that they're Vulcans. But that's not what it really means, not in this context anyway. For the purpose of this conversation, it's important to keep in mind that a Stoic believes in accepting the moment as it presents itself, not allowing oneself to be controlled by their emotions. Accepting the world as it is, not as we hope or wish it would be. They believe that happiness is always within reach because while we may not have control over every event in our lives, we have control over how we approach things. Now, Linda Belcher isn't a philosopher or emperor or even Roman, and while I believe she does live the life of a Stoic, she hasn't certainly clearly stated that she is one. Or rather, her writers haven't said so. You see, Linda Belcher is a cartoon character from the animated show Bob's Burgers. She's the wife of the titular character Bob, and mother to their children Tina Jean and Louise. Side note, I honestly can't say enough good things about Bob's Burgers. They are a clan of lovable weirdos, but emphasis on the love. It's so refreshing to see a simple, loving family on TV animation targeted to the adult market about a family that's free from abuse, substance or otherwise, neglect, and existential dread. But I digress. Okay, now that we know who everyone is, let's get to the important part. How to never have a bad day. Well, it goes back to that idea of perspective and accepting moments in our day as they present themselves. In a season 5 episode called Eat Spray Linda, Linda, on her birthday, no less, faces a litany of misfortunes that would send any reasonable person spiraling. Someone jumps ahead of her in the line at the supermarket. She locks her keys, phone, wallet, and groceries in the car, gets gum stuck to her hair, splits her pants. On her way walking home, she is sprayed by two skunks and accidentally breaks her glasses. And that's not even all that happens to her. You have to watch it. It's a real funny episode. But when she finally gets back home, overcoming every obstacle, every setback and inconvenience the day had to throw at her, she finds that her family has turned the home into a spa for her birthday. She reclines in a bathtub of tomato soup with cucumbers on her eyes. Her husband, Bob, says to her, I'm sorry that your birthday was so horrible, Lynn. And she says... Don't be sorry. This was the best birthday ever. I kicked this day's butt. And that's the attitude that will ensure that you have no bad days. Now, I don't want to overgeneralize this. There are some truly awful days that will stand alone in your life. The day you lose a close loved one, for example, 
or get news that you're suffering from a life-threatening illness. These can be a genuinely horrendous set of 24 hours. But we don't lose a loved one every day. And we don't get news of terrible illnesses every day. Even after that truly horrible day, after we give ourselves the space to mourn, night will follow day, and day will follow night, and at some point you will decide that today's crippling pain will be a different type of sorrow tomorrow. Then, you may decide that that day's sorrow will be a constructive pain that you can use to reach out to support someone in a similar circumstance, and so on and so forth. If we're honest with ourselves, the majority of our days aren't tragic. Frustrating, maybe. Disappointing, possibly. But if we choose not to dwell on the petty slights or unavoidable roadblocks some days bring, moments in our days, they are just that. Moments. They have no permanency. If we end a day like Linda did, celebrating the fact that we have survived everything that day had to throw at us, then we have won the day. Marcus Aurelius once said, Here is a rule to remember in future. When anything tempts you to feel bitter, do not say, this is misfortune, but say rather, to bear this worthily is good fortune. There is such strength in that. No matter what BS this day thinks it has in store for me, I will overcome it. Or, if you really want a quote from a Stoic that will pump you up, try, throw me to the wolves and I will return leading the pack from Seneca. What Monday morning could possibly stand a chance against that attitude? Have a flat tire? Rejoice over the fact that you have a spare in the trunk. The knowledge and ability to change it, or at least the resources to pay for roadside service. A workmate frustrating you? Just think of how close payday is. It was closer today than it was yesterday. And know fully that this person will disappear after you leave the company's gates and their memory will be buried under a warm shower, comfortable clothes, a good meal, and your favorite TV show. It is the self-defeating attitudes we form about life's circumstances that create bad days. Self-pity, not a flat tire, creates a bad day. Focusing on the attitudes of people who ultimately don't matter, not the annoying co-worker themselves, creates a bad day. Here I want to sneak in another quote from another Stoic that I couldn't fit in the title, Epictetus. He said, We suffer not from the events in our lives, but from our judgments about them. The point is, tomorrow doesn't have to be the same as it was today. And you're still awake, so you even have a chance to make today different than yesterday. A little change, a different coffee shop, adding another person to your dinner table, playing a board game instead of watching television, taking a walking trail instead of the treadmill at the gym. All of these little things can open your life into a world of possibilities. Free yourself from expectation. Keep an open heart and mind. Desire happiness and you will be rewarded with a new story to tell. I often consider our ancestors when this topic comes up. And I don't mean our remembered ancestors, although this could apply as well. I mean our ancestors so far in the distant past that they didn't have a proper word for the sun. All right? So today we know the weather. We can tell the level of traffic on the roads, the specials in the supermarket, and what 150 of our closest friends are going to do for lunch before we even roll out of bed. But back then, being naked and afraid was a reality of life, not just reality TV. I'm sure it's not hard to imagine how chaotic, uncertain, and absolutely brutal life must have been for early humans. If food wasn't growing on a tree, or was too fast or clever to catch, there was no food. If it snowed, rained, or was boiling hot, gaining shelter, even if that shelter was ultimately inadequate, was a matter of life and death. The simplest illness could be a death sentence. There was no protection, physical or otherwise, for the weak and vulnerable. 
Encounters with other humans could have been as fatal as encounters with a wild pack of animals. But these people were strong enough to see another day, and another day, and another. They had children, and those children too were strong enough to see another day. With each ensuing generation, they faced the uncertainty of nature head on, tamed their environment, struggled against all odds, invented, innovated, and made survival not only possible, but expected to the point where their descendants take it for granted. That's who you are. That's who you're descended from. That's your family. That's the creature who you shared genes with, a survivor. A bad day for your ancient family members meant avoiding certain death more than once in a 24-hour period, Facing down the horrors of war, starvation, and disease has been a part of the human story no matter what region of the planet your people are descended from. To quote Marcus Aurelius again, Look well into thyself. There is a source of strength which will always spring up if thou will always look. Despite the lack, your family members always had just enough strength just enough to see themselves through. And the evidence of that is obvious. You are here. There were times when your ancient family members nearly starved to death, but they had enough to eat to see enough mornings for their descendants to see another day. That dance with uncertainty and the ability to survive lasted long enough for you to be here. As Seneca said, Sometimes even to live is an act of courage. The ability to hold on long enough to create possibilities in a new day is an ability that is so deep inside you, it is written in your DNA. That is the greatest gift your ancestors have given you, and it may be a gift you will pass on one day to your descendants. We are all creatures of the new day. No matter where we are, we have agency to look at a bad day and at the end of it, be proud that we survived it. A new day may have new challenges, but find comfort in the fact that they do not stand a chance against the transformative power of a will of iron passed down to you over thousands and thousands of years. Please follow us on Instagram at First Light Counseling, Facebook at First Light QLD, and visit our website at firstlightcounseling.com.au. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you next time.